Hi, I'm Ronnie Bringle, and it is a great day to paint. I have an exciting new project for you, and I hope you'll enjoy some of the ter terms and tricks and techniques that I'm going to show you to paint this beautiful fruit tray. But let's take a little bit closer look at it. So let's take a little closer look now at our design and decide what we want to do with each element. This section right in here is what I've called an unidentified hidden fruit. We really don't want the viewer to decide what fruit this is. It could be an orange, it could be an apple, it could be a, a very red pear. Uh, it could be anything that the viewer decided they wanted it to be. So I've already gotten a little start on it with uh, raw sienna and a little bit of naphthol red light. And I did, I've only done one application of the two colors and I've smushed those colors on. Now, if you don't know about smushing, then you have to go back to some of the older videos to see how to smush. But I've got a little bit of color on there now to work with. So now I want to do a, a little bit of dry stippling with my raw sienna. And so I'm going to load up my brush for a dry stipple. And I, I do want to create the look of roundness on this piece of fruit here. So I want to think about creating a circular or a rounded look. Now I'm not going to worry about ruining the grapes or the plums or anything else because I want to work my hand in a circular motion in order to create a circular look. So I'm just dry stippling layers of raw sienna. I want to create a little bit of a lightness right on this edge here so I'm just going to do a little dry rubbing right up, cover up the pattern line and create that edge. Now in order for me to let that yellow dry, the raw sienna, I'm going to pick up some burnt umber we won't go really over that raw sienna just yet again. I want to put back here behind the leaves and behind the plum, I want to make sure that I have a very dark area back in there. Again, we don't really want the viewer to identify what this is. We just want them to know that there's something dark down in there, but we don't want to capture their attention. So now I'm doing kind of a dry rub in the very darkest areas of that peach. Uh, <laughs> I said peach, didn't I? Even though we really don't know what it is, I just kind of think of it as a peach, but I don't want it to look like a peach necessarily. All right, now my raw sienna is dry, so I can come back now and I'll stipple just a little bit more raw sienna. And with that, I think I'm going to leave that piece of fruit alone because the more I play with it, the more I'm going to dig a hole. I've also smushed on the plums somewhat. I've used some phthalo blue, naphthol red light, and warm white. And um, I just kind of brush mix to get some of the colors a little more purple, some might be a little more red, some might be a little more blue. When you want to get a really dark color, you would want to pick up some uh, Payne's Gray in your mix. The, the Payne's Gray will make it a very dark blue purple color. Right now I'm going to do a dry rub because I want to create this little edge right in here that shows a little bit of reflected light. So I'm going to pick up that paint on the tip of my brush, place it right there on the edge, and just do a little dry rub to blend that in. Now I want to create a roundness on this plum also. So I want to go into the fattest part of the plum that catches the light, which is going to be right here. I didn't wash my brush. I had a little bit of purple still on the brush, but I picked up some warm white with it. And I'm doing a dry stipple and a dry rub to create that rounded look. I want to create a little bit more light down along this hidden edge because we could have a little bit of reflected light in there. 
Now my plum seems to be getting a little bit bluer than what I really want, so I'm going to pick up some, on my dirty brush, I'm just picking up some naphthol Red Light, and I'm going to do a dry rub, kind of a search and dry rub to add a little bit of red tint to the plum. So it's starting to look a little bit more reddish colored now. I want to make sure that my brush is very dry when I do this because I don't want to create a big spot of color. I just want to create a hint of color. All right, I'm back into my blue and red and warm white. I'm pr I've got a pretty light color on my brush now. And I want to stipple again, dry stipple and dry rub to create this roundness right here. And then I want to have a light color but not that light. Reflected light should never be as light as the direct light. So I'm placing that again along this hidden edge right down in there. And maybe I'll reinforce this reflected light along this edge. Now it's starting to come together starting to have some color that I like. I'm going to pick up some Payne's Gray and just slide that to create that little crease that plums have. I want to slide that along that crease edge. But I'm also going to use some Payne's Gray up here in the very darkest area. I can pick it up and put quite a bit in there. Stipple it and then dry rub it. It's not quite there yet. Let's put a little more dark right in this area. Okay, and now I'm just kind of rubbing that all over the plum. I'm going to pick up some Payne's Gray with my Thalo Blue can't decide which one to use, so I'm just going to use them both. And I'm going to rub over the plum now, dry rubbing, because I want to create lots of medium values. Dry rubbing will create the medium values for you. I'm back into my purpley, red and blue and white mix here. And I'm going to stipple again. Now in my instructions, when it says that you have to play with it, that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm looking at it and deciding, well, I wish it was a little redder, or I wish it was a little bluer. And I'm just adding little bits of color to make it what I think it should be. I want to see a little more red. So I've got pretty much straight naphthol red light on my brush now. Um, and I'm doing a dry rub. And I can actually kind of rub all over that as long as I know my brush is loaded properly. I can kind of rub all over just to bring that purple color out. Alright, I'm going back to my kind of a neutral purple with warm white. And now I want to stipple light again. We're building values. We're going to the light, lighter values as we get smaller and smaller. And this time I want to dry rub that warm white kind of all over the plum because the plums have kind of that frosty look to them when you pick them off the tree. So I don't want it to look really, really shiny. I, w I want it to look more natural with that little frosty look that, that they have. Okay, now I'm liking that, but I think I need just a little more shaping values. Something to make it look just a little more round. So I'm going into my darker blue, which is Payne's Gray Plus Thalo, and right in here I want to see just a little more dark. So all I'm doing is just dry rubbing
Now the trick to this is you have to know when to quit. And it's actually pretty difficult to tell at this time whether you're going to like that plum in the long run. So I would get it to a place where I thought I liked it pretty well. It's almost where I want it to be. And then leave it alone. Go to the next plum. And once you get all of your plums finished, then go on and get a little more of the painting done before you decide whether you like the plum or not. Now, one nice thing about this is that you really can't mess it up. Now, what I just did was I got a little white, a little more white right in this area than what I wanted. So all I have to do is pick up, I'm going to do some of my dark blue, so that's going to be Payne's Gray and Thalo Blue, and then I'm going to put a little bit of red with it so to make sure it's kind of purpley. I'm blotting my brush so that I'm going to dry rub I just dry rub over that area that I kind of got a little too white. And I think with that, that's how I'm going to leave that plum. Remember when you're working on this plum, you should also see a dark area coming from here and curving inward here. Then you have a little bit of reflected light along this left edge. You have a little bit of reflected light along the right edge. You've got the darker crease, should be very, very dark up in here under the leaves. This plum also should be very dark under the leaves. And you don't want to create a light, bright edge right here. That's going to make it look like a razor edge instead of a curved, round edge. So you will do the same things on all three of your plums. But let's go back to that unidentified fruit for just a minute. I think it's dry enough now that I can put some raw sienna on it again. This funny little thing did take a, a while to accomplish when I first did it. For such a, an obscure piece. But the trick is to let those layers dry so that you can put on the next layers. Painting fast like this, it's harder for me to let those dry. All right, that's my raw sienna. And now I want to turn it a little bit red. So I'm going to load my brush for a dry rub with my naphthol red light. So that means I'm blotting it quite a bit. And I'm going to rub this. I want to make sure your raw sienna is very dry. I want to give it a little bit of a red tint. Look, if I rub on my plum with that red, it's not going to hurt it. It's just going to enhance it. The trick is that you have to have your brush loaded properly. When that's finished, when that's dry, I'm going to add some more burned umber. And here's my, my best advice to you, is to don't be afraid to make it dark. This piece of fruit is going to look very dark to you now, right at this moment, when you're first painting it. But once you get everything piled on top of it, it's going to have the, uh, it's going to have the right look. So don't be afraid to make those darkest areas really, really dark. I want to get a little more red on. You can actually just kind of rub over that with the red, let it dry, and then stipple it again with your raw sienna. And just make sure you're letting the layers dry and keep working with the raw sienna and the naphthol red light. Well, that's all we have time for this week. I hope you'll join me again next Tuesday for my Technique Tuesday, and we'll be working on leaves and grapes. Have a great painting day! There's lots of work here to do, so I think we better get started.